destination boat shopping. The how, what, when, where, and why of our shopping adventures. We're gonna kind of scroll through our notes here. A disclaimer, the following video contains information that mostly consists of our opinions, limited experience, and thoughts about boat buying. We are not professionals and can only offer our opinions. What works for us may not work for you and we encourage you to do your own research as well. Yeah, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what kind of boat to get. Uh, interesting question, but uh, ultimately it all depends on what your needs are, how big your family is, where you wanna sail, and uh, what your interests are. So uh, we've decided that for the next couple of years we're gonna be inherently lazy, which means we want a boat that can uh, act as a home without too much fuss, uh, which means we don't necessarily have to make sure the beer doesn't fall off the counter if we were to heel over, uh, which is a common thing when you're sailing a monohull. Uh, we also wanted lots of open space uh, in addition to the water around us. So we, uh, you know, we decided after looking at our price range and uh, some of the pros and cons of monoholes versus catamarans as well as lengths and what was good for our family, uh, we decided that a catamaran was probably the way to go. Uh, first, we had to consider our price range, which wasn't very much. And uh, then from there, once we figured that out, we kind of started going through the brands and, uh, and honing in on what would work. The reasons why I like the catamarans uh, were because they're more stable than a monohull. And I just couldn't imagine the monohull healing over and having the ocean rushing past me <laughs> on the deck. Um, There's no way I could deal with that. I have a little fear of water. So that was definitely on my no list. So that's why we went for the catamaran. Um, it definitely won out in the end and uh, as a person who knows nothing about boats even just a few months ago I thought that they were totally out of our reach cost wise they just looked like something a rich person would own and that I thought I would never be able to own one of these but that's totally not the case. Yeah all in all catamarans ended up uh, from our research being a perfect fit for our family with our intentions of blue water sailing uh, you know going to the Caribbean playing around, but also for our budget. And uh, catamarans, as I said earlier, also allow some flexibility of what we can have on the boat. They're a little larger platform. And we, through asking some friends and doing some research, decided we wanted to galley up. So we were up where everybody is, as opposed to down in the hull. We wanted to make sure that we had enough cabins and bathrooms for an active family a dinghy uh, that we could pull out of the water should we want instead of dragging it behind. And uh, for financing purposes, we wanted to make sure that we had a boat that wasn't over 20 years old. Uh, you can also hear more about our wants and needs and kind of a wish list in the next video where we talk about the boat that we actually buy. When we started Googling catamarans, we got all kinds of fancy stuff. And uh, then we looked at price ranges and we decided we can't afford that pricey stuff. So uh, we learned the major players in the catamaran world were like Leopard, Lagoon, Gemini, Fontaine Peugeot, and of course some others that are listed there. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that a home built is a bad thing, um, but we kind of wanted the comfort of trusting people that had been doing it and been in business successfully for years. Um, so that's kind of what we limited to. And many of those brands were the majority of used boats we found for sale on these websites. It was always Leopards, Lagoons, Geminis, and a few Fontaine Peugeots here and there. Uh, and then the rest of them, if they were kind of a brand we didn't recognize, it mostly meant we couldn't afford it. So they were not within our budget. So upon first researching mono versus multi-hull, we came across a YouTube video by the O'Kellys entitled Cadmoran versus Monohull, a comprehensive review from owners of both. Uh, this really opened up our eyes to the differences in each and helped us decide what we really wanted. So I really suggest if you're trying to decide which style of boat is for you to check out that video on YouTube. We also watched numerous hours of other sailing YouTube channels, <laughs> including, as you can see listed, Sailing Nahoa, the Okellas we've mentioned, We Sail, Sailing Project Atticus, and a bunch of others. 
uh, that, that really gave us all kinds of information. And we were really looking at how people were interacting on their boat and with, you know, what was going on, what their goals were. And so we took little snippets from each one as opposed to just completely buying into one or the other. And really, thank you to those, not only those four um, groups that provide videos, but to everybody that are putting their catamaran and sailing videos out there. It really helps, so keep it up. Uh, the next thing we did is shopping for boats. So a lot of these boats we found on websites such as Catamaran Site, dot com catamarans.com boat trader yacht world and then facebook sailing groups and facebook marketplace which is kind of an odd place to find boats but actually that's how we found our boat and it was through actually friends of friends that we found it and actually a friend that is near and dear to us was selling his catamaran as well but that was one of those boats that was way out of our price range the the most recommended thing is actually jump on a plane, get in your vehicle, and drive down to boat yards and marinas and look at boats. But, uh, you know, that, that wasn't really necessarily an option for us given that we were in Colorado, but also with the travel restrictions from COVID. Um, but there are a couple primary areas we found, not only online like Randy had discussed, but the Virgin Islands, the, the BVI and US Virgin Islands, the east coast of Florida, and man, sometimes other countries all over the world, they the prices are way lower, but then you have to sail it back. And because we don't know anything about sailing, that was rough uh, for us to even think about. So how can we afford this, you might be asking? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so first, we, uh, we sketched out all of our costs, and then we compared those costs to our current costs. Uh, we, we looked at down payment in escrow, the asking price versus the uh, actual sale price, how much a survey would cost, that includes hauling it out uh, and putting it back in for the sea trial, insurance, sales tax, depending on where it's registered, dockage or storage, service and maintenance, and uh, you know we'll get into the nitty gritty in a future video. We sold a lot of stuff. Uh, we had a paid off 2015 Subaru Outback that we got rid of. We had an 84 VW Westphalia that sadly we, we had to sell. We hosted a socially distant yard sale in May and we also rented our house out right away even before we got to Florida. So all those things combined really added up for us as well. Yeah, the, uh, you know, we did refinance. The rates really dropped uh, earlier in 2020, earlier this year. So we refinanced and dropped by a, almost a percentage point, which was awesome. We had a little bit of savings. We had some stocks that were kind of a joke, to be honest, <laughs> not a lot better, we what but whatever. <laughs> uh, we got our tax return back and uh, we started cutting a lot of house bills. Um, and that was one of the things that we could look at is, you know, electricity changes and trash service changes and all of these things change when you shift over to a more nomadic uh, water-based lifestyle. Um, you know, the another thing is that we were able to actually save money during COVID. We, uh, we were not really going out before. We're, we're not, I'm not a social butterfly. I don't necessarily enjoy being <laughs> out you? with people. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not going out to eat, not, you know, these quick things we used to do just almost in desperation, we stopped doing um, which really helped uh, as well. We also scrapped. We're pretty scrappy when it comes to money. We posted a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace um, because everyone was staying home. They were cruising the internet all the time and we had no problem selling little things here and there. Uh, we cashed in our loose change from around the house, so that was a couple hundred dollars. And then all the extra cash from not going out stayed in the bank. And also, this guy is really good at finding coins on the ground in parking lots, in gutters, <laughs> uh, under doormats. Like, he sees it and he has to get it. So because of Steve, we've also added quite a bit of money to our, our rainy day fund, our rainy boat fixing fund. Again, um, we really looked at our finances and cut back. Um, a lot of things we had been cutting back over the last couple years anyhow, so it wasn't a big deal. We didn't have cable TV. We didn't have, you know, a lot of those things uh, that other families kind of are, are based on. However, we do have a son, 
and mm -hmm. he's a teenager. So, you know, he has a cell phone now because we want to be sure we can get in touch with him. So there are some bills that others don't have that we do and vice versa. Um, we do currently live off of one income now um, since we didn't sell the house. That meant we wouldn't have a large lump sum of cash. Um, I do have a retirement pension from the military, and that's what we're living off of. It's not a lot of money, but uh, we live frugal enough to make it happen. And after we figured out how much money we still didn't have when it came to uh, to purchasing a boat, we, uh, we kind of shuddered with the prospect of, hey, what do we do? Um, so what we did do, again, like Randy said, is we, uh, we sold a bunch of stuff and, and just kind of put our money together. And then and in true American fashion, <laughs> we took out a loan and we shopped around and fa found the lowest interest rate. <laughs> My dog just made a funny noise, sorry. And, uh, you know, with a payment that we could afford every month. So uh, that's kind of what we did. So when, when to shop and buy? Honestly, for us, this is totally our opinion, but we feel we won the boat lottery at, by shopping and buying when we did. We started shopping for boats in late winter, early spring, so around March and April. Um, and because of COVID, again, I didn't have a job at that time. Steve didn't have a job at that time, so we were staying home and on the internet like everybody else. Yeah, the purchase of our boat came around May, um, which is when a lot of boat owners uh, especially those based in the southeast um, of the United States, based in the Caribbean or the Bahamas, they start thinking about whether they're going to go south for hurricane season or north for hurricane season. So we actually ended up coming into this at the exact right moment when people were, you know, thinking of changes, whether it was paying for storage or potentially selling. And buying the boat in May with it already on the hard or in storage meant that we could get to know it a little bit better and work on it a lot before putting it in the water and sailing it. So we've really been blessed to have this time with the boat to get to know every little bit and piece about her um, before we get on the water and we're like, what is this? Why is this happening? We're going to know what to do by then. Yeah, our plan uh, is to have it ready to sail um, during prime time, which for us will be December and January, and then we'll decide where and when to go from there. So why would we want to do this? Why would we want to leave our stable life in Colorado to buy a boat sight unseen and learn a whole new skill, Steve? <laughs> it's basically because our lives essentially felt stuck because of COVID. Both of our jobs temp temporarily closed. Our son's school was e-learning and our life as we knew it flipped upside down. It felt like the perfect time personally, professionally, and financially to do this. And we thoroughly enjoy tiny home and off-grid living. That's why we built the van. Um, we've got this big van that we've been building as a way to, you know, a thing to be based out of. And we've got a cabin on some property in New Mexico. So the boat seemed like the next best challenge. We're really excited to learn a new skill also. In fact, Steve just got his certificate in the mail for ASA 101 and 103, and he's gonna be attending Chapman School of Seamanship this fall to learn how to become a boat captain. Yeah, we, uh, we do love the beach, we love the ocean and sea life, plus the opportunity to uh, get to host family and friends in that environment is really, really a special thing we're looking forward to. And we'll save money. Maybe. Um, maybe. <laughs> this is yet to be determined due to the cost of boat maintenance and upkeep, but I think all in all, without not going out, no yep. gas, well, we'll have diesel. Yep. It's, you know, pros and cons, I guess. We'll yeah. see. And we'll get to get away from people. Yeah. Which is a, a I like, I like people, but like three of them. So. Oh, am I well, one of them? Well, three additional, <laughs> so four. <laughs> so it'll be good to get out of the rat race and, uh, get more in tune with uh, ourselves as a family and uh, the ocean. Yeah, in tune with nature for sure. And with, you know, all the stuff happening with COVID, we don't know what's going to happen. And we just want to kind of write our, our own future. So we're just going to, we're just going to go for it. So thanks for watching. Uh, we really hope that you want a boat shop also. And hopefully this gives you some tips on how you can do that and get out there and go and good luck to you as you shop and maybe we will see you out there yeah the only time is now yes so get after <laughs> it 
make all the fun mistakes we have because uh, we only get one life. So let's enjoy it. Go live it. Thank <laughs> you.